Hey y'all, I'm Todd Bailey. What's up? It's Ari Lumberdozy. And this is fucking brutal. Get in the pit, stock up the fridge, and listen. We're here to cover the latest in metal news and craft beer. A match made in hell. If it makes you bang your head, then we want to hear it. If it tickles your taste buds, share those suds. Turn it up to 11. Crack open that beer. It's about to get brutal. What's good there, Hopples? It's your boys, Todd, Ari, episode number 97 of Brutal Podcast. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We don't have to say it because we've been saying it for like the last fucking 20 episodes. So we already know this is one of the, well, it is our favorite time of the year because yes. we get to do, we get to do two wrap ups, um, one for Q4. Oh, there we go. I don't know why anyone watching on, on our YouTube page wow i i don't know i'm really out of it today anyone watching i am not really sure how to fucking turn off <laughs> there's like balloons that keep on anytime i do it's, you announced q4 so it's <laughs> yeah well okay yeah Th- thanks for listening big brother um and uh yeah no matter what i do it won't turn off but i'm i'm okay with it so hopefully you guys like it too uh anyway so we're doing q4 and then next episode will be the big one the 2023 wrap up uh 2023 best of we got a lot of really cool ones before we get to big one zero zero yeah dude 12 20 this is the day before your birthday so happy early birthday my man thank you thank you about to turn 34 uh hey. not ready but hey <laughs> are you ever no i feel like after 25 it really doesn't matter like for most things i just i have a hard time like i either push how old i am like because i'm almost 33 but i've been saying i'm 33 for like the last couple months like i'm not like I, i'm still i'm still 32 so <laughs> i don't it's 25 whatever you know after that point living you in get the future, your car insurance man. yeah always <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay enough rambling which that will be there will be plenty yeah. of today yes let's get into it there dude reno um i actually i haven't checked yet who has the lower oh it's me it's, it's you me. it's you i should have guessed yeah <laughs> who am i to to think i had the higher one yeah, you do um, have a lot of gusto for thinking that, you son of a bitch. Jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> Today, oh. I have Witchmaker Rye IPA from Jester King. Uh, this shit looks like it's from the movie The Witch. It's nice. It's got this pale face woman with like this bonnet on with like old timey, take like Sam Trials era uh, attire. It's got uh, a is that nice. Pale face Swiss. Right, pale face. Yeah. US. pale oh, face right. U.S. Sir. Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> I love the background on this nice, rich, like purple, and it's actually like scales almost, uh, and then it's got that gold shimmering crest, uh, which pretty much has the name of the beer on it and also the logo of the brewery. They do a good job with all of these. Uh, I can't. I'm not sure if they use the same artist for each one, but it kind of seems like it because uh, they all look very similar. Uh, just yeah. style wise, but uh, yeah, Jester King are from Austin, Texas. This beer is six point eight percent, and like I said, it's a rye IPA. This is the first time I've ever had a rye IPA. Ooh, exciting! Here's a little fun fact about it. I'm gonna hold it up while I read. Uh, it's brewed with Texas grown San Jacinto two row and wildfire fire pale malt from Tex Malt, malted rye and oats. Uh, it's kettle hopped with Citra and El Dorado and dry hopped with Simcoe, Amarillo, Citra, and Mosaic Cryo. Uh, they fermented it in stainless steel with Imperial A38 juice yeast. Uh, what I love about these guys is they are pretty much on a farm and use a lot of shit that's out in the wilderness around them, surrounding them. Uh, it's very DIY, uh, homegrown, if you will. Um, so props to Jester King. And I, I love that they've been selling in stores now. It's a long time coming, but let's get this beast of a can open. It's a tall boy of note. Hell yeah. that, <laughs> the can definitely, because uh, you had another Jester King on earlier in the mm-hmm. year that had... Um, it looked very similar. Was, it's like it was, an a- Abe Simeon from like 
yeah Hellboy. but same color palette and everything so that's that's really cool yeah i'm not sure if it's like a series or anything but uh they definitely kind of keep it very much to like a not necessarily a theme but like throughout it's it's got a similar style some motif there all right here we go with the pour let's hope i don't <laughs> pour all over my keyboard which i have done go it's got a nice little head rising i'm trying not to make it too heady i want to see some of this color come on now oh yeah it's already looking like a rye right tie die baby the real nice, Rough Riders. A nice anthem. little uh, face looking down on the beer. All right, let's get a smell test going. Ooh, I actually really like that smell. Okay. Uh, color wise, um, you can see a little bit through it, but uh, it's got enough of a haze that uh, I pretty much can't see exactly through it, which I like. Uh, but I don't, it's got a nice little, almost like a hazy color to it. Uh, mm -hmm. not really amber, but more towards like the straw yellow. I can't tell if it's a reflection from your headphones, but it does look like it has a, a red hue of sorts. Oh, I, well, you, you know, my color blend. That's, I, that's true. That's true. I anyway, I'm sorry, please seeing. continue. Yeah. Let me get this in my damn mouth. Here we go. Oh, I really like that. That uh, that might change uh, some answers later on. <laughs> That's fucking good. Ooh, I was a little worried with this because uh, I think rye. I often think actually of rye whiskey, which I don't like. Yes, and so I thought maybe it might be similar because it's mixed with alcohol here. But uh, no, this is fucking fantastic. Hold on. She's being selfish now. Let's uh, let's keep pouring the can. Keep it coming. Nice head though. I, uh, I it's not as um, I wouldn't say like thick like a cloud. It's you can like see the bubbles. I would say it's um, lacy, kind of. But there you go. But it's got the it's got the girth to it. <laughs> lacy but girthy. Yeah. Make, make the, let's make that make sense. Our it already does. I just have to say, go out and buy this beer. Uh, I highly recommend Witchmaker, dude. It's making a witch out of me. Hell yeah, buddy. Love it. Chester King's good shit. I'm glad that you can finally get it now in stores. You know, I have to actually go to the brewery, which you should still do. And yeah, Eddie it's, of the it's a lot of fun. Whenever you can make a, you know, make a nice trip out of it. We, that's what we used to do. Still love to do that. Uh, yeah, that, that's what's up, dude. I'm excited that you got to try a Rye IPA. It's been a long time since I've had one, uh, but I do also like that style. But I also do like Rye whiskey, um, so I'm kind of like prone to that anyway. Uh, yeah, I waited good, almost though. 34 years, man. Let's fucking go, my guy. I gotta go with the birthday jokes all day. Yeah, you, you might, and don't, uh, you know, don't be afraid to cry if you want to. As oh, always. I've already done uh, this morning. Perfect. After work. Probably later on. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, fuck yeah, dude. That's really exciting. Um, the one that I have today, I know you have also had recently and kind of yes. a bit of a catalyst for for picking it up. Today, I have the uh, Kentucky Bourbon Barrel, the Cocoa Porter, and uh I don't know if it's new for this year or not. I've not seen this one in particular, mm -hmm. uh, but Skylar and I both really like this brewery. One of her favorites, I hope they still make it, but they have a Blackberry Porter that comes out in the summer usually, and it's fantastic. But I really like this brewery. I haven't had like a bad one from them. There, there's been like not great one. Like they had like a cream one that was kind of weird, but I just don't like that style in general. Anyway, beside the point, Todd had mentioned that he got this in a mix pack the other day. He really liked it. And uh, I was like, yeah, we, we haven't had this brewery in a hot minute. Um, I think the last time I had this on was actually about this time, like two years ago. Uh, it was a peppermint porter that they had. 
And uh, the cool thing about Kentucky Bourbon Barrel is like they always do porters. They don't do stouts, which is exciting because like normally when you barrel age something, it is a porter. Their well, their big thing is like their ale, but the porters are also uh, pretty prevalent for for the brewery as well slash distillery. Uh, but anyway, to give a quick rundown here, eight percent ABV. It it is a bourbon barrel cocoa porter. Like duh, it's it's very straightforward. The names are always exactly what they intend to be. Uh, per the website, Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Cocoa Porter is brewed with cocoa nibs and 100% barrel aged to build out a rich full body porter with notes of bittersweet chocolate, roasted malts, oak, vanilla, and rounded out with a sweet toffee finish. We're, we're in December, you know, th- this is cozy season and uh, this is a cozy beer. I have had this already from the other day because we couldn't just wait uh, selfish and uh, but I'm really excited to have it again as if I need an excuse for it. And uh, it is room temp, which usually with barrel aged stuff, you want it to be that oh, temperature. Oh, I fucked up then. I fucked up. I well, cold. I mean, you you just have, like, it'll give you, like, a little bit of a different flavor profile. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, because the, the room temp, I believe, it just brings out more of, like, the whiskey notes to it. So... I believe I, I'm very loopy right now, so I hope that's right. But anyway, let's get a pour here. Yeah, maybe that's why I liked it, because I had a cold. Therefore, the whiskey was uh, kind of pushed down underneath the cocoa or the cow cow. I say <laughs> cow cow. It is cocoa for the record. You can say cow cow if you want to. It sounds more fun. Um, but yeah, room temp for any barrel age is, is the way to go. It's it's. It sounds weird because like you want to have like cold beer usually. And I'm saying drink it cold, but you can if you let it warm up to room temp, which you probably will. These are thicker beers, usually a little harder to get down. And uh, yeah, you just you'll start to notice certain flavors will will pop out more than others or vice versa. It'll become more subdued. You can see it's nice and very dark, which is great. Uh, porters, as opposed to stouts, they just generally have like not as like full of a body or they're a little lighter in color. Uh, not always, but this one in particular, like this, this looks nice and dark, which is exciting. Carbonation, as for like the head and everything, it came and went pretty, pretty fast. Um, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. It is a little bit strange with a barrel age, but neither here nor there. Let's get a smell here off the nose. Yeah, dude, you can smell the whiskey. It is. It just it smells really roasty, it look really sweet, which I uh, I'm already here for. Uh, but yeah, cheers, Hop Wolves. Q4 wrap up another special episode. And uh, more importantly, just cheers to y'all. Let's get Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's great. I, I really like this beer. It's very sweet um, on on the front end. And then it kind of mellows out as you you go through the whole the whole tongue process, if you will. Um, so it's it's a really nice feel. It is a full body. And uh, yeah, you get the sweetness in there. You get the roastiness in there. Pretty much everything the website described, as we always say, brewery knows best. Let's get another one. I'm gonna keep up with you here. <clears throat> yeah, dude, it, it's it's really. I think the thing that I really like is how balanced this particular one is. Like, it's not super heavy on the on the whiskey front, but it's also not being super overpowered from the sweetness going on as well. So I really like what they did balance wise and. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Mine's, mine's getting murkier as it goes. All of, all of the sediment was at the bottom there, homie. Now you're getting Yo, to the real good stuff. Look at this orange juice I'm drinking now, baby. Sometimes they, they suggest, uh, I didn't think about this with like really, really hazy beers like that. Like you kind of like give it a quick roll, like oh, on the I side like there. Yeah. So you can get, you can get the sediment throughout the rest of the, the beer circulating. Uh, I, I feel like I sound way more pretentious and douchey than usual. No, dude, so. that's brutal tip 257. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's, let's go, dude. Uh, yeah, 
I, I really, I really like this beer. I like this brewery. I, like I said, I haven't had like a bad one from them, but before we get into our Q4 wrap up, what, what are your thoughts on this beer? Cause you, you just had it like, like last week. Take it from me, a guy who's big on Pilsners and Kolsch's, the light stuff. I've seen the darkness. I've touched it. I've been in the void. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I fell in love with that beer the moment I took my first sip. I was like, wow. And like, usually I don't like sweet stuff. Like I try to stay away if it's very sweet. Uh, It just kind of ruins the experience for me. Right. But I enjoyed the hell out of it. I have, I had it after a meal, so it true to a, a a style with something sweet in it. It's like a dessert beer, and I was just coasting on it uh, for the rest of the night. It's a sipper for sure. Uh, it's just because it's a porter. Uh, I feel like porters and stouts, like you're not <laughs> going at it as as strongly as you would maybe something like this. But please don't. They won me over with that, and. I think I think it's the season too. I think the season is really playing a factor in here. It's colder down here, and I'm like, put put something, put up a warm jacket on me. I want to feel like a horse, dude. I want to be a horse. Luke and the uh, Tauntaun. <laughs> um, real quickly, because I I don't think I described the label before we move on to all the hopples. Uh, it it always looks the same it's the same layout the only things that change are the font and the colors usually but this is very sophisticated very classy it's a um it's like a a a rouge type of deal uh or or burgundy burgundy is more what i'm looking for yeah Um, almost like a wood yeah i think wood very wood that's better yeah i don't know what i'm talking about It, it does have like a wood grain look to it and you can even see like up close here whoops it's got like some some of the granules that you would find like on a barrel, uh, which is exciting. So it looks really, it looks really classy. It's got gold fonts, looks like a seal type of deal. Just wanted to get that in there before we moved on. Cause I am getting ahead of myself here. I'm very fucking excited. Well, dude, I want to say it looks so classy. Like I can actually see people at the Kentucky Derby, like drinking that out of the bottle and it would be acceptable with the attire. Absolutely. Maybe that's the key. We can go to the, We'll go to the Derby next year and just drink that exclusively. And they're like, don't you want like actual whiskey? And be like, shut up. You know, we're, like we're I like, wearing, what I like. like black and white tuxes with the hats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Clearly we don't belong there, but whatever. We're going to keep it going. Like we always keep it going here. Uh, this is the Q4 wrap up, which I've said a few fucking times now. Beer. We didn't record as much like this back half of the year just life and everything has been lifing essentially so we're picking just one that we we really really liked from the past three months so october november and december uh again it is december 20th so we're like we're as close to the end of the year as like we we would allow ourselves to do for beers for music to drop and everything like that i'm just again rambling dude what is your pick for q4 for your favorite beer that you featured would it be bad if i picked the one i'm having right now because it is that damn good it would not but i do want to know what you were gonna go with founders breakfast out okay that the tried I mean, true it's been so long it's been it's been a while since i've had that and it just brought me back there was some nostalgia with it but also just a reminder that it's that damn good. I will allow and accept that. Uh, It is, it's a solid, solid beer. And I mean, founders is one of the OG for craft beer here in the States. And that is a staple of the brewery. And, And we talk about that a lot. And also the same thing with music is like bands or breweries get to a certain stature and like, you don't like necessarily forget them, but you just, you're like, they're going to be like, it's going to be good. Yeah. So like I want to try something different. Uh and and the breakfast ad is one that is is always great. But like you might not go to it because it's it's been around for so long. Mm-hmm. But no, that that's good. That I'm glad that the one you had today like surpassed all expectations for you. Dude, so that's fact exciting. That the sediment at the bottom changed it into more of a hazy the way I like it. I don't, I don't know if this is particular to Washington, D.C., but I love their style of hazies. It's pretty mm-hmm. much 
all the pulp. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's actually it, it's more it's more of uh, the Northeast okay. that that does it, like Boston area, like Vermont. Uh, well, Massachusetts, Vermont, like up that way is, I think, where they first started it. But okay. D.C., I mean, it's still East Coast. So I'm done mansplaining. I am on some weird shit today. Hop Wolves, I apologize. That's awesome. I'm glad you like that one. I'm glad you got a style that you got to try. And it's also meeting a style that you already like. Yes. Um, I, In a similar vein, I'm going with... um. I'm going with uh, Donnie Barco from Kings County Brewers Collective, a.k.a. Nice. KCBC. Uh, it is a double dry hop IPA, and they are from Brooklyn at 7.2% ABV. Uh, the thing that drew me to it, KCBC, I've seen so many times. It's one of the most metal breweries in the country, and I've been wanting to try it for super, super long. I, I have access to it here in Pittsburgh which is very fucking exciting. I was just at the beer distributor earlier and, and they had more and I, I really just want to buy all of it because I am like enamored with that. And we also started getting Abomination more here too, which is another like super metal brewery. Um, it's following you. That's why. It, ooh. Spread the word. They follow. Shout out to that movie coming out. The sequel to It <laughs> Follows. I can't fucking wait for that. But I digress. Donnie Barco. The the riffing on Donnie Darko, I love that movie. The can art looked like Frank the Bunny from the film. It was very hazy. It was really dank, and it had that bitterness that I miss from time to time. It being the double dry hopped IPA, so it was, it was nicely balanced. Felt good in my mouth, which is always great. Um, yeah, I I really again broken record, but all about like. The collective, the pageantry. So, like, the beer was great. Label art was great. Brewery, I've been wanting to try for a long time. Check, check, check. So, that is my pick for the beer of Q4. Uh, it'll be a little bit more interesting when we do the full wrap up because we can get into, <laughs> into it a little bit more with a few different ones. But uh, those are two really strong selections, dude. So, Oppos, if you can. Let us know if, if you get a chance to try any of these or if there's something that we should try. Because uh, yes. we, we want to know. Like, of course, we're here for the music, but we want good suds, dogs. Come on now. But with that being said, we also want to talk about our favorite music, which is contradicting exactly what I just said. But that's OK. We can do what we want here on Brutal. And we are. So we're going to start off with our top five EPs of Q4. So again, this is October, November, December of 2023. This is the last one. And just kind of like a little bit of ground rules, what we say every time, it's there's a ton of new music that dropped this year. I there always it. is. Yeah. It's super hard to keep up. So these are the ones that stick with us. And either like we think about it a lot, we revisit a lot, hopefully a combination of, of both of them. So uh, why don't you take it away there? Due to Reno, what do you got for top five EPs? Ooh, here we go. Let me get my handy dandy notebook, which is my e phone. <laughs> we are starting with Within Destruction, Rebirth, nice. man. What a comeback. And yeah. It's not really a comeback, just what a return to the roots, if you will. Yeah. Uh, this is a deathcore banger of an EP. Uh, it starts off with Demigod and what the fuck, man? Like, you're just like, oh, there's no singing on this at all. And on top of that, we have some awesome features as well. So, uh, um, yes, we do. It's an EP about Elden Ring, I'm told. So, uh, still have yet to beat that game. And <laughs> I'm just going to listen to the album instead. Have you beaten any game recently before we move on? <clears throat> I was thinking about this man. earlier. I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> you got me there. Mm hmm. I'm mm -hmm. caught in my lies, my web of lies. <laughs> you sit on a throne of it too. Okay, okay. So yes, oh, stick yes. stick Sorry. with the album. That's, stick with the album. I need to keep going. Yes. So that's number five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually unless you want to keep it to just one, that, that's pretty hard. That was it. That was the only one that, that really struck the, me. I just I didn't listen to anything else. And you're going um, from five to one, correct? Yes. Yeah, we're okay. going down the scale. Uh number four, the breathing process. 
with Toast oh, Grane, uh after we had our discussion with Mr. Rabbi, 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 however you say it. Yes. I don't want to belittle him, man. He is amazing on this record, and so is the rest of the band. The guy's fucking... Br- I think this is the best breathing process I've ever heard. They're firing on all cylinders, dude. No, no dude, fucking and doubt. Doubling down on the fucking black end part. So come on. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. And number three, this is going to be a surprise. This I have gate kept this band. I'm so sorry. Nice. And dissociated. Wow. Yes. We're going with dissociated with their EP, The Horror. I have nice. such an enjoyable, heavy EP. Uh so much so like you're just going to start jamming each song. I just, the riffs are there, just the instruments and the vocals. It's got a lot of energy, which I like, but you're going to find, find that it's pretty heavy as well. And you're going to see the horror. And number two, we are switching it a little bit to the lighter side of things. Fox cult, the indigo fault, uh, catchy as hell. Uh, so we're we're moving genres a little bit, if you will, but it's still metal. We still it's a little bit more screamo, if you will. Heavy on the singing though, but oh, I don't. It's it's reminiscent of like some early two thousands, maybe even dipping into the two tens kind of sound. I'm telling you, man, that first track, Empty Space, you're just gonna. It's that course gonna get stuck in your brain like an earworm, dude. And number one though. Sharing a similar color pattern from the artwork, uh, the callous Dow Boys, who else was it going to be? Uh, God smiles actually upon the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> it's a three track EP. Uh, you know, I think we heard two songs before it even released. Yeah. And so we were only blessed with the last song, which I personally believe is the best song. Everything from the riffs to uh, just the vocal styling. That dude's all over the place. And it's mm-hmm. like he's in a conversation with other people. It's so, so sort of schizophrenic, if you will. But it's catchy, great choruses. Uh, everything just blends together. I don't know a band to compare them to. Maybe protest the hero a little bit. That That's probably the closest yeah. I can think of offhand. Maybe that would Dillinger mix, just fucking ram those two things together and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, they they are one of the most unique bands to come out and all really ever because yeah they mm-hmm. they they have like one one minute it's like a dance party and then it's like a stupid heavy breakdown into a catchy chorus like bridge to like jazz fusion and then a uh, solo maybe. <laughs> It's very progressive in every facet. And yeah, there there truly is no band like the Catalyst Dow Boys. And and that's great. great and they're so good name, live, dude. Yeah, they are great. Awesome, awesome picks there, dude. I the only one I didn't know was uh the one you gay kept. And I'm low-key kind of pissed about that, but I'm telling you, man. Check them out. Disaffiated. Okay. I know it's kind of a generic band name, but they're going to turn you around with the music. It's it's that damn good. Hell yeah. I love it, dude. Um, Fox Call was really cool. I know you were championing that a lot, and it's a, it's a super sick album. That's stuck in my head. That's that's what's up, dude. Yeah, great, great picks. Welcome back with Indestruction. Uh, I, I know a lot of people were kind of like poking Seriously, fun to y'all. be like, yeah, yeah. And Brutal Love. Very proud yes, yes. Of, yeah. of them for that. Uh well, not of that. They they were they were doing fine without us before, but it is is we're proud to feature them uh and the breathing process amongst many other super sick bands that have dropped just amazing shit this year, dude. We're going to my EPs now. Thank you. I'm excited. Um Yeah, where's the balloons? <laughs> yeah, where are the let's thumbs up. There we go. That's Boom. acceptable. That yeah. Is. For everyone listening, uh, fireworks just went off on my screen. Thanks, Zoom, for that. Live. Uh, live, okay. yeah. Doing it live. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So my top five VPs for Q4 2023, starting it off with number five, uh, Sunmancer. 
with Nothing Ever Happens. I had not heard of this band at all. I don't even remember how I found them, but I fell in love with them. Metalcore, like Golden Age of Metalcore, like to a T. Yeah. Uh, it does remind me a lot of Misery Signals. That was the first thing that that came to mind. But like still like soaring choruses, which awesome. Um, still super heavy, real technical. Uh, yeah, I just I really like what this band is doing. And, and generally speaking, if like what I'm listening to most of the time is more of like melodic metalcore, which Spotify is telling me, but that's right. Um, and, and you'll hear that throughout this list, of course. Uh, so th- that was a good way to kind of get some uh, a little bit of a change of pace after these next four, really, uh, <laughs> which next up at number four is nailed in M.A., Ma. Um, Ma nailed it. Ma, this is right up there with squelching. Okay, um, I love it. But it's their "Lust in the End" EP. Uh, Todd turned me on to these guys, and just a really like unique and refreshing sound. Still very heavy, but the the vocal stylings are uh, are not super super different. But like it, it's a little bit like more raw, more emotional, which is your boy's bread and butter, of course. Uh, yeah, I just really really again like fell in love with this ep and i just kind of kept coming back to it and it's got really cool album art too would you say it was lust in the end i would say that nice nice um it's always lust in the end dude come on and you know that anytime like everything is in all caps like shit (laughs) slaps like you know you know they mean business uh so yes that was number four number three of course the breathing process with totus cronin could not not include that we pretty much touched upon all the points that todd brought up uh but yeah they they are just in so in the fucking good. element this is this is the best for sure uh and, and you can tell that like it is a, a collaborative process now too um because i know most of the time it's like jordan that just does like a lot of the writing uh but they like the whole band has input in it now and like they have a solid band too and I always joke about this, but low key hope that someone does this, like the John Oliver segment where we keep talking about the same thing. And it's just like us talking about the breathing process, uh, just very and now. Yeah. And now <laughs> brutal can't stop talking about the breathing process. Uh, we yeah, I mean, we love to breathe. We love the band, all the homies in there. Uh, this is really cool. And yeah, if you haven't checked out the episode with Don Rabadou from a few ones ago, Definitely do a lot of really cool insight into the EP and they have a full length, I think, on the horizon for next year. So, fuck yeah, let's get it, my guys. Number two, four EPs. I'm going with Psycho Frame and Automatic Death Protocol. I I wish I could remember exactly verbatim what their shirt says, but it's like no push pits, no whisper vox. Like I bring it up every single time because it really is like to a T. They want to make like the heaviest fucking thing that they can bring back that old school again, the golden age of death core. I just like to say that really, Uh, but it is like the old school flair, but it sounds it sounds like it came out like this year. Uh, a lot of really talented people in this band i've been fucking obsessed with hunter young ever since i realized like that was that was him and like everything else that he's been uh doing this year including mood ring like their ep is fucking phenomenal Come on, yeah. uh i know like it was kind of weird because like the the deftones comparison like they were wearing the influence like right on sleep but like i really love mood ring i really love psycho frame and i really love hunter young and whatever he's doing is fucking beautiful uh so that's number two and number one it was pretty pretty fucking easy decision surgeon with petunia uh beautiful like the flower like the flower it coming off a of willow dude i i, I thought about dude. that the other day i don't think willow is actually a flower but in my mind like it's very like a at tree. least like floral. Yeah. And maybe it's a flower. I don't know. Anyway, uh Jake Wolf is on some like Universe 25 shit. I don't know where he's at, dude, but this EP is just 
it's it's beautiful it's stupid fucking heavy which which we've gotten with reflections over the last mm-hmm. couple of years yeah including they just dropped a, a new track today uh yeah. as johnny tardulo from carcosa said sounds like a heart attack uh that was for their last track but it's still the same vibe like you feel like you're dying in the best way possible and crying yeah, like it, a clown baby crying like a clown baby you got it it's yeah it's like a very drum forward heavy uh ep which is really cool because uh i don't know like it's just it it gives that that it's like a very full dynamic uh again like really really heavy and this is jake's solo project so between this we got new reflections and reflections is coming like back on the road for the first time in a long time uh that's really exciting so uh jake wolf is another one that i've really grown to love and like pretty much anything he touches like I want to listen to it. Yes. So yes, those are my top five EPs. We're going to get into the brutal EPs now. Yeah. Sir, give me Let's the go. heavy. What, what do you got? All right. And number five, uh, I'm going with Psycho Frame Automatic Death Protocol. Yep. Reiterating what you have said about the band. Easy. And number four, though, is Surgeon. Number four. Interesting. Uh, reiterating what I already said about this, <laughs> but it is damn fucking heavy. Again, think Willow from the other band, but he's channeling it into this new avenue, and it's just different because it's a little bit more drum heavy. <laughs> uh, at number three, we're going with Larsenia Row. So okay, just nice, kinda nice. Came out of fucking nowhere. Uh, it's got a creepy looking artwork with that i think so in in a news or something yeah but it's uh it's called dereliction it makes me think of uh, zoolander derely (laughs) but uh it's just it's got great features it's just it was a little bit more visceral than uh surgeon for me so it, it, it it took that third spot and number two, though, I am going with Within Destruction Rebirth. Nice. Uh, because it is dumb heavy and it's fun. It and I think the fun factor really bumped this one up for me because it, it's just brutal in, in your face of having fun. So you're laughing and screaming at the same time. It's just, yeah. And it never lets up. And then having, uh, what is it, David Simonich on one mm-hmm. of the tracks? And then I forget the other one um, on the last track. I think it's Distance. Uh, oh, list. Alan. Yeah. yeah yeah it is oh uh, yeah yeah dumb heavy so that's number two at number one this is another gatekeep <laughs> selection oh my god when does it end i'm going with writhe w-r-i-t-h-e okay. uh the out or the ep title is in filth and dude you are going to be hooked from the first track it is over the top production, but fucking heavy. Uh, I think I like a Star Wars kind of song intro in the background, and then it's okay. haunting. It's very haunting, and then ugh. you're gonna be one over the first track. That's all I can say. And okay, this rose to the top immediately. I was like, "That? How do you beat that?" So. That's my number one for EP, Writhe in Filth. Okay. Uh, yeah, again, I, I don't know. I keep fucking gatekeeping this shit, man. No, I'm, I'm some a, surprises, please. That's true. I, I really, I do appreciate that. And, and that's exciting for myself. And Hot Wolves have a lot of fucking filthy, heavy shit to check out, uh, along with some really catchy shit, too. Yes. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to check that one out. The Lucinia Row is wild very like given like nihilist vibes and yeah, um, i think that that's what got me yeah it is it is really it's a little bit more produced than like the nihilist is i think but it's similar vibe so if you like that really like like creepy like essentially like horror horror escape. Escape. Yeah. yeah um so that's cool the um yeah within destruction that is a great ep and and i do we talked about it before but it is nice just like when bands are like, yo, like, you know, we, we do want to do other things, but like we could still like do do the damn I thing. I feel like it was a mic drop from them to be like, hold, hold it on. It was. Hold on. 
Yeah, because like I I know I, we kind of alluded to it before, but like they they were poking fun and being like, you want to hear like the heaviest fucking thing, and people are like, oh, they're just kind of like you know like being playful because like that's just who they are be like well they're still playful and they're still fucking heavy so like you got your lotus and people are calling this like basically like death wish 2.0 which i think is a pretty accurate description there dude in the pig squeals like he's doing them oh yeah he's doing them like unabashed like yeah i'm gonna do the the brie 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 on purpose and put it in your face i i think a lot of bands are doing that kind of like it's it's parody but like with purpose essentially yeah, yeah. um because like i was listening to like the smoke uh zarathrusta the other day and like every song i'm like oh this is like the amir song like this is like the as blood runs black song like and it seems like they're like bands are like kind of picking these you know these nuances like a styling the, yeah right so they'd be like oh you want like you want that like dumb heavy shit because you don't think we can like I'll here we go you, you want i'll give it to you. <laughs> i'll give it to you yeah and it gets like real weird real fast but you're like this is sick but like it's kind of weird but like uh great picks i oh, uh, and you. i i you know I'm, I'm very surprised at a lot of them not good, good. i guess like place placement wise um yeah okay so we're starting off for my brutal ep picks we're going with brutal alum mugshot with cold will nice uh it is like a cold piece of steel to the face really the mugshot's like blown the fuck up over the like really like two or three years like since they came back yeah for very good reason like it's just like unabashed like this metallic hardcore that uh i just i love like their sound and this is like the first the first one with the new singer too oh that's and, right um, that's right yeah it just yeah they they're they're doing something very well and they're getting as todd would say their flowers uh, i really love to see what what has happened to mugshot over the last couple of years and again we've been very fortunate to have featured them in the past another brutal it's alumni another brutal alumni so yeah cold will is number five Number four, I'm going with Manicore. Oh, yeah. Florida Deathcore, as as we were just talking about, that's another like throwback band. MySpace. Uh, yeah. MySpace era. Uh, but they're new. You know, not not throwback as like they're coming back. They are just taking that sound and really honing it. Like it's a three track promo. Todd turned me on to these guys like earlier in the year uh, with their first EP, which yeah. forgive me, I'm blanking on, but it's it's fantastic. I really like it. And this kind of just dropped out of nowhere. So, yeah, three song banger, but it's got like tricky audio on it. Um, and another one like wow. all all these like uh, MySpace Deathcore like revival bands and their uh, top five friends on the MySpace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not including Tom. Tom's number one always. Forget like me. don't yes. get don't get your shit twisted. Uh, so yeah i really i really like that that throwback sound because you know that's what we grew up listening to and it's nice to get like a uh, a breath of fresh air into like that era so that's number four number three had to go with brain dead misery oh, volume two beautiful this is one that i uh i almost didn't put on because it just it just dropped like i think it was like last week and i think it just kind of like randomly came up on like an artist radio like oh fuck dude like this is I'm brain dead i i'm not ready my body's not ready for all the bass drops like that is first and foremost one of like the most fun things about brain dead is how often they use that and that is a technique that i will never get tired of yeah really like just kind of going off of misery volume one from earlier this year this is another band that that really like split the whole year and, and that's really cool. We get that with Psycho Frame. We get that with Brain Dead, Manicore. We were just talking about. Uh, I'm sure it'll come up again. But yeah, just like really fun, like a little bit like a new metal, like new metal core flair, but also like some technical aspects to it. And it's just dumb, stupid, heavy. You will be brain dead after listening to it. So that's number three. And then it sounds like kind of anticlimactic, but one and two are the same as my EPs. So number two is Psycho Frame with Automatic Death Protocol and Surgeon with Petunia at number one. Yeah, I, I knew I knew I'd like Psycho Frame. 
because it's yeah. Echo Frame. Uh, and then Surgeon just, again, we, we've already kind of touched upon all that can, that can be talked about, but it is a, uh, I like the singles and I liked the EP better, which it's a long EP. Like yeah, it, we weren't it sure should be an category. album. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, it, it's very long, uh, but that's not a bad thing. It just kind of threw me off that that was like how they classified it. Yeah. So if, if the hop was like, dude, this is definitely a fucking album. Number one album, then whatever it does. Cool. It's, it's all the same. But speaking of albums, what do you got for me? We're going to start off with your number five. And for the people listening, this, so this is top five. This is uh, not even thinking about if it's brutal or not. That'll come. But this is just what do we enjoy the most this year? The top five bands and the respective albums. So at number five. You're gonna. This is an interesting list for you, Ari. I don't think you're expecting okay. any of this. And number five, I can't wait. I'm going Pan Opticon, the Rhyme of Misery. Okay. So over the course of this year, I got into more death metal, which led me into black metal. And this, I also think, was inspired by me watching The Northman because it is. Oh yeah in yep. that goddamn pocket and it's so fucking good uh there's a lot the intro track is fucking uh i think this it might be the minute long one i think but it's it's like nothing but like cold winter sounds and shit oh, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. and then uh with i'm i'm sure like a instrument or like a pattern that's real low in the mix and then you get to number the the second song and i i think it's this long epic uh let me look up the mixture but uh I could be getting these uh, backwards, but, uh, you know, you got song titles in Norse, I believe, or whatever language comes from uh, the movie I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, the, the first track is like two minutes. And then the second track, Winter's Ghost, is 20 minutes long. Dude, it's epic. I'm here for the journey. That's going to be a theme, this whole list. Here for the journey. And uh, I just felt like the... The winter's bleakness in the music. I love the vocals on top of that. Some black metal, I really don't like the vocals, but there's certain bands that just hit the right notes uh, and then have that long drawn out epicness too. Uh, so that sold me. So yeah, that was oh, yeah. A, a surprise at number five. Um, next up, we have, this is, I'm, I'm telling you, dude, you're not expecting any of this. Uh, at number four is Valdrin. We featured this on a list uh with their album throne of the lunar soul so this is this is like fantasy black metal but i love the vocals uh like i said before that's that's one really key factor if i don't like you or not is the vocals but they just do it for me it's it's it feels like a lord of the rings in nice. metal form and i love it you see the album cover you're gonna be like okay i get it there's like some corny parts, but you feel like you're at like a Renaissance fair or something like that. And I love it. And it blends so well. And the instrumentation, dude, the guitar work. Uh, I'm usually a drums guy, but the guitar was my instrument of the year. Uh, so that really won me over with a lot of these picks. And number three, we're going to switch gears, though. Osaya with the Kairos. <laughs> I, I love this list. It's so dude, good. Yeah. Twists and turns like a roller coaster. Um yeah, what more can I say? These guys, I feel like, up their game. Uh, they switched her style a little bit uh, to make it more unique, I believe. Uh, the half of the album has already, like, came out before Kronos, which mm -hmm. I didn't, like, realize in the moment, but that's, like, the back half of the album, which is a bold move. Usually, uh, you know, those are, like, the unknown ones where the singles right. are usually, like, higher. Dude, from that first track, which I think is one of the best ones on the album, <laughs> just tight as hell i think uh they're on a, a better trajectory than they were and i really think they're going to start to stand out uh, and they bring a little bit of that old old school death core with it mm -hmm. uh, um yeah it's it's i wouldn't say too flashy the last song definitely uh is a is a favorite among a lot of fans uh, it kind of shows a little experimentation so yeah I don't know. They they really won me over with that album. I was pretty hyped for it. I was like looking forward to that one. Hell yeah. And number two, uh, switching gears again. Uh, we're going a little bit more uh, doom and black metal uh, with 
Wayfarer, American Goth. And this That's is mixed fun. with folk. And like, this is, I feel, uh, the start of what really country metal can sound like and like still have that cool factor and not be corny. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like this feels like you're on an epic dark Western. Think like Jonah Hex. Think like, um, you know what I'm talking about? Like, Again, Dude, Dark American, Watch. Come on, Dark now. Watch. Yes, you have to remind me. But yeah, think of that video game. It's true to the album title, American Gothic. Like, just think American westerns mixed with this gothic, creepy, uh, like end of the world shit. Uh, I fell in love. I think I, this album won me over because of the road trips I sometimes take for work, and like just putting that on with the country roads uh, <laughs> surrounding Austin. I think it's just. It rose to the rank through the ranks for me. But number one, number one is Nihilist the Room, dude. I did not see that coming. Yeah. Um I have to I actually play this the most in my car. Oh uh, yeah. It's just it's like I'm listening to a horror movie, and I hope Fred Nihilist gets into movies. And I hope he works on films to produce the soundtracks and even yeah. do some of the screams for demons and shit, dude. Uh, this is almost minimalistic in a way. Uh, the production on it is a little odd. And I don't know, he just creates these horror scapes, which he talked about. You know, you can't make out most of the words, but that's fine. Uh, the lyrics are there for you to read. But it's it's like it paints such a picture about like, a heavy theme and scenario. Uh, and I don't know if it's relevant to him, but uh, it's just so bleak. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, dude. And it's it's legitimately fucking scary. Yeah. Like and I, he been using like, uh, not necessarily synthesizers, but like he's scratching records in it, whatever you call that terminology wise, but like, so it's a little new metal flair. Uh, as mm -hmm. like the backbone of it it's such weird noises then he like plays it backwards that was that was what i really wanted to champion this year is like people who went like something further that tried something new yeah more than osiris who brought me the old school that's that's why osiris is in there you're right <laughs> that's the both worlds the only one that i i probably could have pegged for your list would would have been osiah uh, everything else was a welcomed surprise. Oh, yeah. So fuck yeah. And that's one of the many reasons we love doing these these wrap up episodes, because as we always point out, like we well, unless you're Todd, who has continuously gate kept for this whole thing. Um, well, that, well, true. Honestly, that list was a little bit of the same because you were so surprised at who it shows. Well, I it, it is. But it, I think it's more of like just like the genre and the style True. than yeah. anything um, that that's really like, like black metal, like the death metal, like experimental of like any, any facet. Uh, it was really cool. That Wayfarer album is like super, super sick. I do like that one a lot. Uh, it, it is. I was fun. hesitant. Is, like uh, definitely Devil, Devil Driver released a country metal album, which I thought was pretty good, but it was, it was all covers. So like for this to be original material and it to do so well, I really think it divine defines what country metal is like i feel like this is like the benchmark now they're doing really good stuff dude and uh yeah get get a nice cloak get a good good hat for that like but a yeah horse? basically look like yeah i mean if you can swing a horse like fuck yeah why not playing red dead and you're listening to wayfarer boom it's hey, a great I night. like that combo that's, that's, a, great, that's a good night yeah hell yeah i love it i love when when it's not what is to be expected so fuck yeah dude that's what's up um so for my top five albums i'm starting off to end the year with year of the knife with uh no love lost that is a band that i have like known about for many years but really didn't give them the time of day honestly unfortunately due to like the accident that the band endured earlier this year. So we wish everyone in the band, specifically Maddie, who is still, as far as I know, like working through and yeah, recovering very much, very much on that road. 
So we wish nothing but the best for that band. And again, specifically Maddie. They did release an EP earlier this year that I I did like, but no You're love sorry. lost. Just really like, like Todd had mentioned, like getting more into like death metal, and like black metal and stuff. Uh, hardcore was a big one for me this year. And again, like more of like that metallic, like chaotic hardcore and near the knife just really, really did it for me. Great features. You have Devin from Sangui Sugar Ball. You have Dylan from Full of Hell, uh, which wink, wink will probably come up again. Uh, yeah, I just I really I really like the like the delivery that Maddie does vocally. It's just pummeling musicianship. I really want to see this band live. That's number five, though. Ear of the Knife, No no Love Lost, which rolls into number four with Zabal. Zabal, <laughs> I have been practicing. Zabalard. S-V-A-L-B-A-R-D. Oh. Zabalbard. Yes. There we go. Oh, uh, close enough. Close enough. The edible that I took earlier is finally hitting, so it's going to be a good time. Zavalbard with the weight of the mask. Again, this is a band that I've known about for a long time, but this one in particular, much like Todd had mentioned, like the journey, which we always mention the journey here on Brutal. I really love getting lost in this album because it it's a very unique take on like black gaze, but they have like Yeah, there's there think of Death Heaven a little bit, but yes, like Death Heaven, but not Death Heaven. It's like Deaf Heaven, but they have like more like more hooks and more melody. Yeah. I, in the sense like because they they're also combining like like rock influences in there as well. So like it's a little for lack of a better term, like it's a little bit more digestible than what I think Deaf Heaven would be, because that's just kind of like you just like let that go on in the background, which you you still do with Sabalward. But uh there are like a little bit more like standout moments and it's not just like one big vibe the entire time. Yes, I, uh, I agree. So I guess I guess what what I'm getting at is like I really love putting on this album, just kind of getting lost in my thoughts, which is always a big thing for me. Uh good or bad, usually it's good, but I really, really enjoy just kind of like vibing out and, and and listening to that mask or the weight of the mask in particular. But then, like Todd, we're switching gears, going pedal the fucking metal, dude. I instantly fell in love with this band when Todd brought them up. Body Prison with Until oh, Madness. Come on now. Uh, Melbourne Chaos is how the band describes themselves, and that is accurate. Dude, they have a shout out in the first track. I fucking love it. It's it's so good, dude. Like. It is just, yeah, it's just chaotic. It's heavy as fuck. Like, I listen to this album quite frequently. And it, it was like that that heaviness that, like, I just I just needed to, to get that balance. Uh, not, not to say that there weren't plenty of other great heavy albums that came out. We'll get to that. But this one in particular really stood out. We love Australia. We love the scene in Australia. And this is just another prime example of getting that unabashed deathcore with some like a lot of catchiness too like yeah yeah it's just good shit your body is your prison and they're doing their best to really like maybe it's a creed reference it should be it should be if not then that's a missed opportunity everything should be a creed reference really come on uh which brings me to my number one and two is creed actually sorry everyone just put weathered and <laughs> And human it's play. A, it's actually the live version of their cruise ship <laughs> tour. <laughs> That's your favorite. Uh, look at me when I park this cruise ship in your head. <clears throat> anyway, that's number three. Number two, again, on a journey to the stars and surviving things. Super Bloom from Silent Planet. I am enamored with this album. I've been a Silent Planet fan for many, many years. This is my personal like offering, favorite offering that they've done. And like that's saying oh, yeah. something because like they really don't put out anything bad. 
Like they're all really stellar at stellar, but this is like, this is more of a straightforward record for yeah, them. Not so and, much the uh, poetry core or whatever you call it. Yeah, exactly. Like it is, it's like, it's just a huge production. Like it sounds cinematic. It still goes heavy. Garrett's still on his like great lyricism shit. Like it is, it's, it's really catchy. And, and I just love the lore, not the lore because like a lot of it like is based on their experiences that they had. Like they endured a car crash as well. Like not that long ago. I can't remember if it was this year or the year before, probably the year before. Um, yeah. Within, yeah. At least within the last couple of years. Uh, and, and talking about like, just like the concept of like what a super bloom is where like the, the flowers just pop up like in a very arid yeah. environment at it. like and it has to do with like a lot of aliens and stuff like that it just really like really really cool like i just again i can't i can't they're going on tour like early next year and i am gonna be at that for sure i can't wait to see that um i love super bloom like it it was my number one pretty much like for most of it until i listened to full of hell and nothing when no birds sing, which is a very different direction than what I would normally go in. But again, we're talking about the journey and we all know how much I love to get lost in things. This is the one like I like I hear no birds like I feel just like vibes, like no matter what the fuck I'm doing. I really love Todd had mentioned, like getting those types of bands that are just doing like different things. Yes. Uh, Full of hell, great fucking grindcore band. That's not this it, is not really. a, this is not <laughs> it. Like this, there's like elements of full of hell in there, but nothing uh from what I read is just really into like these ambient, like atmospheric soundscapes. And just that's what this is. It's like a weird merging of like like a black gaze, but like more more like more ambient like a little like lo-fi type of deal Dude, that's why i love the artwork it's a triptych but it's just splicing it a cloud in threes but like there's like the storm part of the cloud and then it gets whiter and just they're separate but together and that's like i think the perfect representation of what that is in that pairing of bands yeah that, that's the best way to put it dude it it doesn't seem like it should make sense, but it totally does. And I just love this album. Like it just it just really blew me away. Like I only recently started getting into Full of Hell uh, for their grind shit. But then this came out like this ain't it. Like, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Like, what what am I listening to? I love it. I love lo fi in general, like anything that's like super chill. And I can just kind of like, again, like just vibe out, think like I could be I could be writing something and listening to this album, which I've done many, many times. Uh, so between that and like Zabalvard, like that's the type of shit that I've like really been into, at least like this back half here. Uh, yeah. But don't don't get it twisted. Still need that heavy. Still need that heavy, which yes. we're going to get into. We, we touched upon it a little bit, uh, but we're going to do our brutal albums next. And number five, and this is for Q4. Remember that. Number five, Mouth for War, Bleed Yourself. Fuck yeah. It just all the way through, man. And there's a lot of tracks on this damn thing. And mm -hmm. uh, Ari, you told me about this album. And good. Yeah, that was my favorite of the day. And it has kept till this list. And that's just some good hardcore, think like Boundaries almost. And yeah. Yeah. Boundaries Chambers a little bit. Right up your fucking alley, bro. Let's go. Number four, we are going with end, E N D, <laughs> in case you were wondering about the spelling. Uh, I'm going with the sin <laughs> of human frailty, their oh. new album, dude. Uh, I was a little hesitant at first with this one. Like I, I on first listen, I was like, this is. I actually didn't like the production, and that's saying something given who interesting who produced this, and then. On repeat listening, it started growing on me. It started making sense in my mind. And dude, Thaw, I feel like is one of the best songs of the year. It's a good one. Uh, it's just something different for the end in a way. Uh, but dude, 
What a fucking album. <laughs> what more can you say? You're a fucking uh, end. That's it. That's right. Um, at number three, uh, this is going to be a repeat. I'm going with Osaya, man. I, I really, really think they stepped up their game. Cool ass fucking artwork. And I think it's very represent, representative of the music itself. Uh, it's just like this guy in armor screaming his soul out. Like it's. Uh, yeah. Good guy. Or good job, <laughs> old chaps. <laughs> but also okay. a good guy. Good guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> um, number two, you mentioned this band, Body Prison, dude. Immediately. <laughs> just shot up like what is this band it's a debut so album good, dude. a debut album insane uh, this makes me excited for 2024 yes they're gonna ride that wave so i expect a new single at least i would think hell yeah um and number one it's keeping straight through with nihilist dude i think it's so unique in its bleakness and like i really think He's on to something here uh, with what he's doing. This is a one-man producer. Uh, yeah. Inspiring. And I'm telling you, get into movies, please. Like, that'd be fucking awesome to hear a soundtrack from you. Uh, even sound effects. Fuck, dude. Your voice is... It's that tea kettle highness, but, like, yeah. what he's doing with it. And then uh, the instruments are so, like, unique with... You're getting turntables sometimes. You're getting just like weird sounds, and then he wobbles them, and then uh, it's a th- it's a theme concept album. But it's mm-hmm. uh, I highly recommend to read the lyrics as you're going throughout. Not only because you can't really hear them sometimes, but I, I really feel like it'll enhance the experience for you. Yes, um, I love the album artwork. It looks like the Grudge a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm just all for it. Like that'd be a sick fucking tattoo. Uh, they won it for me, man. I was pleasantly surprised with Nihilus. I I definitely dipped my toes in their earlier lo- releases, but never lo- really connected. And I feel like he's he's hit a good stride, and I hope he keeps going with it. I know he's really teasing something crazy for next year, so we'll see. And what more can you do? Yeah. I don't want to find out, but. That's a great pick there, friend Reno. Uh, I'm really glad you brought up like the like him scoring films and stuff because I thought the same thing. I was like, dude, I want like I want to get him like I want to do something and or just be like, dude, give me like a soundtrack and like I I want to film something to it. Dude, this is like, like those albums like the Wolf Sounds or the Whale Sounds. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know what I'm about? <laughs> where you turn off the lights, kind of zone out. This is that but like the horror version. It's like a um like a story if you will as it's playing mm-hmm. out um almost like he's reading a horror novel but like acting it out it's it's pretty cool and it, it is it's like rather immersive and like yeah. speaking on the album artwork it, it really reminded me probably just because like primed with it being like japanese influenced uh like i felt like i was in fatal frame if you Ooh, remember that yeah, game hell yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a s- super scary game but yeah, I I thought the same thing, and it is, dude. I can't emphasize like enough how genuinely scary it is. Like I was unpacking shit like by myself, and like I would like go around the corner, it'd be like the creaking noises, and like him doing yes. the tea kettle. I was, like so this is layers, legitimately dude. freaking me out, and I really love that. He went like North Lane on the layers of shit that he put yeah, in. like it's nuanced as fuck. And I think it's important to all of what you were saying, because we kind of talked about this, like the singles themselves do not do it justice. I wasn't vibing with it at all. I didn't like them at all. And uh, once you put it in that package, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, think of it almost as one song, if you will. Yeah. Um, That's a good way to kind of think about it. And it loops perfectly. You'll you'll you can put put this on the background, like you were saying, and then I'll you kind of revisit the songs because it's just it it's perfect i think on that note i've been playing resident evil 4 shout out to my dude kevin kt uh for hooking me up with that i'm gonna listen to the room and play resident evil 4 because i think that's gonna be a good time the room in the room the resident hell yeah hell yeah sit there with my typewriter and shit um (laughs) to save to save just to save yeah 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 um okay 
stellar list, dude, for sure. You already know what it is. Uh, I'm going to actually echo pretty much all that just in a different order. Okay. Minus one. Um, so starting it off with Osaya and Keros could not have Osaya in the mix. Been a big fan ever since. Shout out Eric Lewis, baby bear back home. Uh, turn me on to these guys. And yeah, they've just gone progressively better and better. And this is like their most polished work to date. And uh, rightfully so, they are, it seems like they're gaining a lot of traction, like you had mentioned. And uh, yeah, a lot of like, a lot of existential lyricism for this one, which I'm always here yeah, for. Yeah. Um, coming off of like Loss, which was very sad. This one, but heavy, sad and heavy. Uh, but this one is like a bigger picture type of deal. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it just, it delivers for sure. Number four, Nihilus, The Room. I, this almost I didn't did. make the list because I forgot that it came out like in this quarter. Yeah, um, that, that that happens to me too, where I'm like, wait, what are the months that I need to <laughs> limit myself? But it makes sense because it came out around October, uh, which so did this next one, which is End, The Sin of Human Frailty. Uh, your fucking end can do no wrong. And like Todd said, this is more of a dynamic record for them. It's yeah. not just as in your face heavy, which there's still plenty of that. But yeah, tracks like Thaw on there are really starting to like push like what the band wants to do really. And, th and that seems to be a theme is like there's what the band wants and then like what the fans want. And usually they don't jive. Um, so having, I think in this essence, like one track where they're just doing like what the fuck they want. And then the rest is like, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, a case you strain kind of did that, except like we got a whole album and then what the fans want. Well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so three was, end. this is the only one that's different. Uh, demon fuck with Necronomicon. Uh, that was the, the end of that word, sir. Uh, I, I did have to read that like quite a, like Necro and Omicron, like that's like oh no 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 like they're 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 better than that. Yeah. Uh yeah, it, it's it's dumb fucking heavy, but it's so tongue in cheek, which the is one of my titles, favorite man. things. Oh yeah, it, like you have like chain smoking grandma on there, which like uh, and all of the all the singles that they had put out like last year, like leading up until this year, had made the the uh the album and i really like the artwork too i'm not sure who the artist is but it's really cool it's got like a woman but like her face yeah. is like removed and like a, a figure coming behind it's really really cool uh and it's again it's like a very serious artwork and they're a very serious band but then you have demon fuck is their name and then necronomicum um it's just it's a good time and like todd said before uh when you can inject like fun into the heavy that's, that's pretty cool that's that's the shit I'd be talking about, which leads me to number one, Body Prison, uh, Until Madness. Like I I had to have that in there. I am obsessed with that album. Body Prison the, 2023, baby. Like, let's go. Let's let's fucking go. Indeed. So, yep, those are real albums. That's that's the majority of our shit. Do you have anything else to add before we get into the last two categories, which is brutal song and brutal artist? Um, I would say I, I was actually shocked. Uh, we had more similar for that one, but uh, I love that fact as well, because yeah, I love that. We both like saw a variety in the heavy and went for it. Like that's what's up. But I, th I think the, the times that we have like, the most similarities are always in the brutal categories. Cause like what we it's listen true. to on a day to day is not, I mean, oh that's God, similar, it's... but it's like, it's a lot, it's a lot more varied, yeah. but like when it comes to the heavy, like we're, we're synced we're like, out wave. We're like, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're Leo with the drink. Like that's yeah. what we're talking about. <laughs> but yeah, that's always fun. And, and I like having like, at least like a little bit of variance there as far as like order goes too. Mm -hmm. Well, most brutal time. song. What, what do you got? I actually, I had a really hard time with this one. I did too, but uh, I listened to this so much that I was like, it's got to be that. Like, yeah. I'm going with Filth Chin Check. Uh, oh, nice. They released nice. Multiple, multiple singles this year, but that one, it's just Chin Check at Wrecked, bro. Like, so fucking fun. I love that they're going more hip hop. Their vocalist is black, rightfully so, and he's a fucking beast. 
behind the mic and hell yeah i don't know he's leaning into his culture a little bit more and i fucking love it uh, I think the top of it, I think they're doing it better than Amir. I'm, I'm going to say that on record. I, I, yeah, I would have to agree. I'd have to agree. Hip hop with the metal. It's just, it's that fight music, dude. It's what you go into the pit for looking to punch someone in the face. Literally a chin check. Uh, oh, yeah. check, check your chin when you're fucking listening to that song. Cause someone is probably coming at you with a fist, dude, <sighs> man. I, yeah, it did it for me. It did it for me. I am super happy that you picked that. Filth has continuously like like come into their own. I feel like yes, and, yeah, and, and 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 I and I don't know if that is because like they've always had that hip hop influence, but like only recently, I think like more so like on the last EP going into like these newest singles, like they really fell into it and be like, this is like this is working. So I yeah I can't I can't wait to see what Filth has for next year and that song's so catchy I dude know. I want a full so length catchy. from you I want a full length we've gotten sort of sampler EPs but I want the the whole shebang bang <laughs> it's good shit it, well they they do have one full length which is fucking sick that yes. you should check yeah, out yeah. Uh, but again this new direction new air quotes more refined and, and I guess new. yeah there you go yeah there you go. It's good shit. It's yes. really good shit. Uh, so fun. I, that's such a fun lesson. Like that gets me hyped. That makes me want to go to the gym. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Um, I went with our homies in Wind Chimes, who we featured a couple episodes ago with Ten Thousand and Counting. Um, yeah. So that's a lot of fucking. That's a lot of fucking numbers there, my guy. And. A lot of the times when I'm going into these, at least this past year, uh, just because I'm on my e-boy emotional shit, anything that has like a really profound message mixed with yeah. the heavy is is going to do it for me. And and that's exactly what Wind Chimes did with this particular song. Not that they haven't done that with other tracks, but if you get a chance to listen to the episode where we feature them, we go a little bit more in depth with the song. But it has to do essentially with indigenous people in these like unmarked graves at these sites where they're supposed to be like helping people. And it's just it's just not great shit to to say the least. And uh, to have that encapsulation and have Gavin, who is of indigenous descent, just screaming like rise and thrive that oh, like that so is raw. stuck. It's so raw, dude. It's stuck in my head like all the time. Like I'll just be like, like singing to my dog, like rise and thrive. And it's just, it's really cool what Wind Chimes is doing because they, uh, <laughs> they, um, they are a genre bending metal band from PA here. Um, yeah, and, they, uh, they dropped that EP earlier, but this is actually like a step above that in a way. Yeah, dude. It like, the EP earlier in the year is like way more doomy and there are still doom elements in here, but it's like a lot more like death metal centric yeah. than anything. Uh, it, it's just, it is, it's just a really cool culmination of a lot of things. Like you have the flair of, like I said, Gavin being of indigenous descent, like the, the drum circle that leads into the track and then him oh, screaming 10,000 and counting chills so that uh that one just like stuck with me a lot and i mean yes we we are a little bit biased because like we did feature up but like it's a great track and there's a lot of meaning behind it so that was my most brutal song for q4 todd had chin check great fucking shit we're gonna end the episode with a chin check what was your most brutal artist for this last quarter all right, it, this is not going to be too much of a surprise because I've talked about them enough. I'm going with Nihilus. I really think he's out there with it. He's going for something different, which is just breathing the freshest breath of life into the genre. I really think he's expanding what Deathcore can sound like with this record. And it's just him. It's insane. It's just him. I'm sure he's he's having people help as well, but like, to have this in your mind and put it out here like this, uh, 
And usually concept albums, uh, you know, don't go so well, but he, I think, nailed it with the tone, clearly with the instruments. I listen to this in my car during drives. Like, this is not an album you usually do that with, like, but yeah. Beautiful. I was expecting that, but you yeah. know, sometimes, sometimes we get thrown for yeah, a Yeah, sometimes there's a twist, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about Nihilus ever since he, like Fred, decided to do like his solo project, um, which wasn't that long ago. Like it was just over the last couple of years. Yeah. So yeah, that is again, cannot fucking emphasize enough, like how unsettling that record is. And it's exciting. So that's a great pick. Uh, also probably not going to come as a surprise. I am going with surgeon for most brutal artists. It just, again, Jake is on some, He's on Universe street, 25 dude. shit, dude. Like I, a home run I, derby, man. Like I've seen Reflections like back in the day and like I liked Reflections. I didn't love them. But ever since like Willow dropped and this whole change in tone and delivery and fucking heaviness, like I don't know. Again, I don't know what the fuck is his going voice. on there. There's but... something about his voice and his scream. It's just, I don't know how to describe it, man. It's just, it's very unique, even though it's not exactly, but like, it's just, he's in his pocket. Like, he is the best surgeon money can buy yes. in our genre. And, and it helps to, again, the pageantry, like, really cool, like, 3D art for all the singles. The Petunia yeah. like cover itself is really cool. It's like hyper realistic, but very creepy most of the time. Like one of love, it's a damn flower and it's that fucking heavy. That's the beauty of it. That's that's exactly what the fuck I want. Like I want the that balance between like, you know, something like just very beautiful, but then you listen to it, you're like, dude, what the fuck am I actually listening what? to? I don't know. So that's it. That's Q4, man. That's Q4. That that's the last wrap up before we do the year end wrap up. I hope that the Hop Wolves. I hope you guys like that we did these wrap ups. We have a lot of fun with it, and I know personally speaking, it helps me stay more accountable and yeah. like push myself to listen to like what we're talking about. Because again, with so many releases every week. Things get lost in the shuffle all the time. I lost sleep over this. I lose sleep over this every I'm literally every like, time. like when I have a break during work looking through and being like, do I got this right? And then like when I get home, like it's it's on my mind constantly. And it was even harder to choose this year than last year. I agree, dude. And, and I think it is because like we we've been every every year that we've done brutal it's like getting a little bit more like i feel like we're keeping like closer tabs on yes. on yeah. bands so it just makes it like that much harder but again we have fun doing these thank you for listening hop Wolves. let us know what you want to hear how we're doing of course we appreciate any good ratings or follows or anything like that but more if importantly you so choose. if you so choose if not then like go fuck yourself but that's neither here nor there we just want to have like we we love doing this and we just want to bring the best that we can. If we're missing anything, if we should try anything, if you're like that fucking sucks, be like, keep that shit to yourself. But we want to hear the rest of it. Yes. So let's get one more. Cheers, Hop Wolves. I have no more beer for this episode, but I got a, uh, my coffee from earlier. I will clink your glass at least. Boom. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go.